Welcome to Royal Mystic Collective Wisdom. I have a guest today. This is our first uh, segment for the season four of my podcast. So uh, we are now uh, using video so you can watch us as well as listen to us on all the platforms, uh, Apple, audiobooks, audible.com. You, you see us on all, all platforms that are podcasts for there. So today we have a beautiful friend who is with us to join us to talk about our journey together. She is a friend of Mystic. We have known each other since 2007. Yes. Shawnee the poet, Shawnee E. Cole. And she is a beautiful poetic goddess. I love her to pieces. And the first time I ever saw her was in a coffee shop in Galveston. <laughs> and I'd never been around spoken word poetry. So you were like a, an epiphany to me. She looked like an angelic being standing there <laughs> just beaming with her energy and uh, the flow she had. She had just had a baby. Yes. So it was her first show coming back from, from having her daughter. And she had the most enchanting energy around her and her voice was magical. So I just want to introduce you to Shawnee as my friend and a beautiful soul that is part of our Royal Mystic tribe. And she has so much going on. I just want to tell you quickly, she got a, a major award and, and like, like on, on <laughs> this story, but better than a, a light up leg. This is a proclamation from the city of Houston. Is it all showing? Yes. And it is declaring a Shawnee the Poet Day. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> On her birthday. And she's On got this birthday. beautiful a comment, or, or ac proclamation. Proclamation. Yes. I, I was going to say, like, a, they're, they're celebrating her. So y'all know <laughs> when I'm talking about that Six of Rods moment, the ticker tape parade in your honor. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't even said this to her before, so so that probably caught her off guard. But that's what this is. They are she yes. is in a victory energy, and she's written a couple of books and constantly doing poetic things. So there's always something. Uh, she's never never a dull moment. So Shawnee, yes. Uh, the first time I saw you, they referred to you as a pit bull in a skirt. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So, so the, the cool thing is, so Shani the Poet, the original Sunshine Princess of Poetry is, um, is my stage name and the pit bull in the skirt. Um, I was definitely very fierce. Um, is, is, and still is. Yes, still is. Um, it was just at that, at that time, it was like, you know, um, very, a very a very powerful moment um walking into my own power finding your voice yes yeah. it was it was being able to to say who i was standing in that and not being apologetic for who i was and that was a big thing and i think that's a very freeing thing which is what i encourage yes. greatly because i learned by watching her see this is the thing you have to remember when you have your light shining you inspire others. Yes. And so by her standing in her power, it filled me with something that pulled me in. And that's when I became Royal Texas. And, and that was my poet name. <laughs> and I was very fierce too, because yes. I had been silenced and, and felt so small for so long that I was able to come through and really, really get into that poetry. And, and I went all the way to national. So yes. it, it was a big deal. And, and, I uh, got to give big ups to Snow Industries, Black Snow. Yes. He is a big poetry uh, proponent in Houston, and uh, he has kept it alive this entire time and for a very long time. He's been doing this for. Oh, um, he's been doing this a very long time. We go back probably about um, 20 some years. So I know he's been doing it even longer than that. And him giving the stage to so many poets, always having a platform. So. Uh, when he created Snow Industries, I was SI's first lady, Salsa's first host, which was really, uh, really awesome. So, yeah. And so I even got to get in on some of that, too, because we did a bunch of tours we in did. Midtown <laughs> and downtown. And we just would show up and just have like poetry rounds 
and snow included me even though I, I you know a lot of times you don't get included into things like that if you're not in the inner circle uh, but he saw that I was going to, I was dedicated to it. I was showing up every week at every spot Yes, and uh, supporting everybody I could and just feeling that fire of that energy. And uh, it helped me to do what I do now Yes, without fear. Absolutely. To not be afraid of what, what being different and talking about being different because I'm not the only one that's different. So, you know, and, and what we do uh, we weren't either one of us weren't where we are spiritually at, at the time when we started. <laughs> and I was talking to her about the law of attraction. I was like, oh, hey, uh, I'm going to try this new thing. <laughs> they, they say if you're really, really positive, you can speak it into existence. Right. Yes. And uh, yeah. So she goes, oh, I think I need that, too. <laughs> Me too. And so we started trying to watch what we were saying. So we are, yes. we really do correct each other and, and not as much anymore, but right. we had to correct each other and let, let ourselves catch ourselves, uh, dropping our light. Yeah. And, and intentionally, um, speaking what we want and, um, which, which is, you know, most people don't think about things like that. And that's, that's the, when you have the circle that you have where you're speaking life, and light into each other, it really makes a huge difference because, you know, you're recharging, it's coming, it's coming back and forth. Like you're, you're loving on each other and you're picking each other up and you're feeding each other. And when you, when you have that kind of circle, it makes a difference. It changes the dynamics of everything. It does. And it also gives you permission. Yes. Because in some, for some reason, and I, I know I've spoken to many, many people. Y'all know I've been on here for a hot minute. Uh, so I've got a lot of people I've spoken to over the years. Mm -hmm. And they all have that little hesitation of needing permission. Yeah. Or needing approval. Yes. Or needing to be qualified. And guess how you get qualified? By doing it. Yes. You have to take the steps to do it even when you're not qualified so that you realize you already have it within you. Yes. And you absolutely do have it within you. So one of the things that um, really speaks uh, on on our behalf as, as friends is that she was also very spiritual um, with me as we <laughs> before she had gifts and we'd never really talked about them. Right. And then I started doing tarot. And this was before I even thought about a YouTube channel, five years before the YouTube channel ever came into the picture. And it was when I was first learning how to read people live. Yeah. And I asked her to come to my house and let me read her because I, I was scared. You know, I didn't know if I really could do it. If, you know, that qualified, that need to be. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she sat down and uh, I said, uh, and not, not, not knowing any of this, I said, um, I have to tell you something that might, might shock you, but. <laughs> there's a baby in here. And she goes, <laughs> and she hadn't told any of her family nope. and nothing, no one yet. So for me to, to pick that up was, uh, I was very much in a place of, I was confirmed at that moment because absolutely, yeah. And I, I cause I felt stupid saying it because she hadn't told me anything like that. Oh, her face was priceless. Yes. <laughs> Yes, this was her second child. So yes. I had no idea that she was even trying for a second one. I don't think she did either. <laughs> but but <I> no, <laughs> that child is here and in the 3D realm with us now, uh, Leger. So she is pretty <laughs> hey, amazing. <laughs> and we got to we got to talk about Trin. Trin was the was the way maker. Yes. She was the first uh, sister to come the, through. The first little miracle. Yes. And so. Having having that kind of uh, ability and being able to share it with someone who who believed me, yes, right, and and didn't make fun of me. That was hard because even your good friends can kind of tease you, yeah, and they, make you a little discouraged because you're you're very um, fragile when you first step out. Just like the poetry, I don't you think that I just walked out there and started going? <laughs> this woman saw me standing there shaking with the paper and trying to read and. Just so nervous, my voice was shaking, and she came and said, "Well, there you go. There's your trial by fire. You, you, you that's over with. Now you can get on with now it. You, now you got it. Yeah. Now, now, now you, you can step into it. Yeah. Yep. You paid your price. That's the tax for getting on the mic. 
you got to have the nervousness. And, and that's what you told me. You got to come every week. Yeah. Come on, let's go. You got this show and this show and this show and let's do it. <laughs> And it was and, and it was really cool. Her her first time on a mic was she she was nervous and she felt like that paper was like shaking, shaking, shaking. But when I tell you that it was the vibration of her just allowing herself to just be seen, be, seen, mm -hmm. be heard, be felt like it was such a beautiful thing to see. Like, I'm I'm so grateful to say that I was able to see that because that experience was man. Yeah. Something, something to be something to be spoke about <laughs> and that's why we got to be fast friends because we connected immediately yeah. and and our journeys have been parallel uh oh yeah yeah she, she has to follow me through everything I tell her, don't follow me through this one whenever there's something that's really kicking like no don't please look this is happening don't you dare <laughs> If you don't want none of this. <laughs> and it is so, it is so wild. It's random. And that just like, and, and for me, like, I, I might not even be thinking about it. And she hadn't told me something that happened three, six months. And then it's like three, six months down the line. It's like, and she's like, don't you remember me saying that? And I'm like, she said, I told you not to follow me down here. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> So yeah, this is this is uh, the solid tribe I have that I started with that helped me to get my roots in. And I also want to talk about some of her accomplishments through this process for her. I know y'all know me. Uh, we have gone through lots of years of of doing things, and and I have something new coming up. But first, I want to talk about what she's got going. She has two books. She published her first book in 2010, and it's called. Telling secrets there we since go. birth. I, I crossed another line out, so sorry. Telling secrets since birth, yes. and uh, it's a. It, I, she did a performance with that book where, because she's using different colors, and of course I was purple. Yes, <laughs> just so happened to be wearing that today, and so that was the first time I'd ever read someone else's piece, like been able to stand up and and do it without paper. So let me just clarify: she didn't just do the piece; she performed. Formed. There is a huge difference. I read the piece. I did the piece. She performed. And, you know, out of all of the colors, and I had, you know, quite a few um, that I handpicked those people. She stepped into that so beautifully. Like I, I did the piece, but it was like, it was like me doing it. And she was the one doing it. It was so beautiful. And I was so grateful for that. Well, I kind of had a little pressure on me because I had to measure up to her. I couldn't half ASS it because, you know, the person was standing right there. <laughs> so I I had really taken the time to really get it and and bring emotion and really convey I what, appreciate what I felt was my interpretation of the piece. I really for appreciated her. that. Because, I mean, that's the celebration of it is to watch someone else use your piece in a way that you feel that you're honored by it yes and that's that's the big thing is i wanted to honor you with my performance and not make you feel like i wish i had to fix somebody <laughs> well no problem there yeah. yeah so i'll just tell you uh there, there was a lot of different things that we did and where we traveled and and all the different shows and it was so um inspiring and a huge amount of growth through all of it. So uh, I encourage anyone who has any creative thing going, whether it's music or poetry or art, uh, baking, whatever. And if you're a psychic or do things on YouTube, whatever your thing is, don't let anybody tell you that you need to be qualified to do it. Because you already are. You already are. If you're feeling the urge and you're feeling the pull and you're attracted to it, because like I said, boom, right mm -hmm. in the chest. Both of us said the same thing about that. You know, as we got to be friends and talking about it later, she um, felt the same way I did. It was like we had known each other forever instantly. Instantly. So I knew that was my that was my person, even before I knew about all of this stuff. Right. So um, I just want to bring up. Also, she's got a second book that she's just released and I have it right here. The first one. I'm still waiting on my coffee. y'all. <laughs> just saying this is let me get the glare off. There we go. 
and it is called Healing Granted. And these are poetry pieces as well. And there's some beautiful letters in here. And there's journal space. And she's got a date and time where you can kind of interact with the book and let yourself kind of put times and, and space to it and let yourself be um, in, in a place of feeling. It's, it's like a journal, but it's 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 a combination. So what I was given um, spiritually is that it was a program. So the first book, Telling Secrets Since Birth, was definitely a collection of poetry. And I just really wanted it to be out there which was a beautiful thing because I felt like it needed to be shared, right? Somebody yes. else was walking in Absolutely. that same thing and thinking that they were alone, but they weren't. So that one, that was telling the secret since birth. Um, healing granted is actually different. It um, does have the poetry because poetry is still a voice. It's, it's a healing um, modality, even if you, if you will. Um, but the, the program is um, giving yourself permission to heal. And so people do that through different things. They do that through writing letters. They do that through poetry, through affirmations, through gratitudes, sometimes through puzzles, definitely through art. And um, that, and so Healing Granted has, a, has all of those things in one, including the photography, which my oldest daughter, Trinity, she mentioned. Yes. Her photography is in this book, the which is phenomenal. The pictures are amazing. And just to have her involved in that with you. Yeah. I know we spoke about it, but when your children help you create and you can, and they may not realize what a big deal it is at the time, <laughs> but she will as she, you know, as life goes on. Yeah. Um, understanding that, I just want y'all to know, here's a blessing for me. And, and we used to do this all the time. And we still do when I have a new idea or any kind of new thing I'm about to do. Uh, we, t we, we run it past each other. We rehearse to each other. Yes. And we let each other like, that's what we did in poetry. We I got this new piece. Uh, <laughs> and you, you call me when you got five minutes to listen. Right. Yeah. And, and, and we would, we would help each other and never be critical. Never, never. And always be supportive because we didn't have to be critical. We're yeah. more critical on ourselves. Than nobody else has to be. <laughs> We don't right. need to, we don't need to pour salt on nothing. Everything's salty already as it comes out. So um, I'm always honored, and I, she has praised and told me she's honored whenever I share my stuff because Absolutely. it's a big deal, Absolutely. right? Being it is. In, being in the energy of that. And um, so, with that in mind, um, I want to talk about something I'm doing in in January. That yes, and Shawnee will be there, <laughs> um, and we'll probably do some poetry. So if y'all want to come and see, um, there's going to be an event in Key West, Florida, mm -hmm. and it's to help us release our burdens of the past, letting go of old blockages as far as money, um, relationships, energy yes. for our, our new creative flow, and just, just shed that past stuff, letting go of that dark shadow energy, all of the things that we think we have to carry with us. Yeah. Um, and, and we're going to do it as a group. And there's a very few uh, amount of rooms left and we're doing it as, as a wonderful retreat so that we can all support each other. Yes. And you can always find out more about that at royalmystic.com, which is an amazing uh, energy for us all to be able to come together and be part of. So if you have any questions about that, you can always uh, find me on royalmystictarot at gmail.com and ask whatever questions you need. So yes. now let's get down to some of the things that my sister friend over here is qualified in. Cause y'all all know I'm a psychic reader and I do Amazing things. One. Yeah. I do, <laughs> <laughs> I do life coaching and I am a clairvoyant, clairaudient and clairsentient. So, and just basic, you know, wisdom because I'm, I get a good channel. Um, yeah. But what she has gone off into <laughs> She has a master teacher certificate in angelic Reiki and Atlantic Atlantean healing. Yes. She also does dragon energy. Yes. Crystal healing and crystal skull wisdom, which y'all yes. know about my blue boy. She's the one who gave him to me. <laughs> so he's, he's my beautiful lapis lazuli skull and he's a wisdom energy. And what is this? Oh, Oracle cards. Yep. And this beautiful, amazing person right here is the one who taught me <laughs> about the car readings. 
And I was honored to learn like that was honored to teach. Oh my goodness. Um, That experience was beautiful. If you ever have the opportunity at any time to take any class that she's offering, not just the retreat, the retreat is going to be, it's going to be absolutely amazing. But anything that she has the opportunity to teach, um, if you have that opportunity to experience that, I promise it'll change your life (laughs) because it definitely changed mine. Um, it, It gave me the opportunity to um, help people and to help, um, guide people, which is something is part of my life's purpose. So, um, her being able to open that channel up for me was, man, um, I don't even think I have the words for that, but (laughs) I'm I'm certainly grateful. So I'll I'll say that Um, it definitely changed my life. Well, and it, the thing is, is when I see someone do that for themselves, and step into that role to help others to do that for themselves, that gives me the huge, the bigger picture of not just, it's not just about me. It's about the other people that I can reach through what I do. And I think every single one of us, if we just use one thing Mm -hmm. that we can be on a, on a common ground with someone or to educate because a lot of the ignorance going on in the world is from lack of understanding yeah. and and just basic not knowing. Yeah. Right. And I think that just by being able to relate to other people on a soul level mm-hmm. will change everything in, in in at least in your in your circle. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's that old saying of when when you rise, we all rise. Mm-hmm. And that's a real truth because we all go up when one person is able to step out of the bucket, right? Crabs Mm -hmm. in a bucket. Yeah. Right. So she's got all these wonderful little, little things going on here. So (laughs) I, I, you, I'm going to let you go with some of the stuff, you know, the things we just talked about where she she has her Atlantean healing and her crystal skull wisdom and anything else you want to talk about, you go right ahead. Plus you want to tell people where they can get your book. Absolutely. Um, So the Again, the beautiful thing was me starting with the Oracle Tarot cards, um, which I'm absolutely grateful for. And with that being opening everything up and, as we say, removing the veil so that we can see, um, it does make you a little okay, a little uncomfortable for a minute. But it's because it's allowing you to um, really step into who you really are. Um, With that, I took classes. I took classes. I took classes on meditation, um, everything that I could just take in. And so what um, was what pulled at me, which called me um, first and foremost was angelic Reiki. And I was um, I was excited to be able to to know that the connection that I had, that it was divine Some people talk about um, different types of energy, you know, witchy, oh, that's witchy, oh, that's this, it's that. But the fact of the matter is people say things like that because they're scared. Yeah, they don't understand. So when you, when you, when you have that calling, when you have that calling, look into more information to be around more people that are like you. So, yes, I have a um, I'm a master teacher for Angelic Reiki, um, the Lantean healing. I think the dragon energy is probably one of my favorites because, you know, the dragon, that energy goes up to the 12th realm and is able to come here back earthbound. And it, it the way that it clears and it'll show up. And it, and I, I remember talking and talking to you about it and I was like, oh my God, I keep seeing these dragons in, in the, in the clouds. And, and I was like, I see it too. <laughs> I was already on that. They yeah. were, they were, they were so very in your face. Like you can see me. Yeah. I am here. That is not a mistake. Yes. You know, because some people's like, ah, oh, you made it up. Yep. Yeah. No, there's, no. there's. No, no mistake. So my encounter with dragons came before she started doing her thing is when I first started the tarot, um, we did a thing and they said, pull in your spirit animal. And this beautiful iridescent dragon showed up for me. 
And I thought, why a dragon? And then when I had to do some of the work, I realized I needed a dragon. <laughs> Absolutely. Having to do with some of the people that were involved, I needed yeah. a dragon. Fire breathing. Yes. Yeah. I needed a flying dragon that would take care of business. And, so, it, and, and it, it did. It did. It did. Yeah. It, it allowed us to be where we are now yeah. in, this, in this beautiful, safe space yes. of who we are being able to, to guide people in, in different ways. Um, that's, that's probably, probably my absolute favorite, uh, favorite out of, out of everything. And I actually use a, a combination. I have a, um, Angelic Gray Key meetup in Spring, Texas, um, with, um, some of my other favorite girls, Patty and Carol, um, who I've met. Spring. I've met them. They were awesome. Yeah. Yep. And I have some awesome um, uh, mentors out of the UK. Yeah. Um, Crystal Heaven. Yes. They they come here a couple of times a year and teach these different classes, which is where I took the Angelic Reiki. Um, but they always have different things that, um, you know, that they're that they're given spiritually. So and let me throw this in. Y'all <laughs> hear me talk about Johnson's Rock Shop in Livingston, <laughs> Texas. This is who turned me on to that. So, uh, yes. yeah, we're going to have a field trip there. Don't worry. I I want, like, we're going to all have a meet up there when the weather's nicer and it's a little spring timey. So yes. we're definitely going to do that. Yeah, we're definitely overdue. We're definitely gonna, <laughs> I haven't been there in a couple of years. So, yeah, we need I'm to I'm sure go. they got some good stuff now. I bet. Um, so you can find, of course, um, Healing Granted um, is available for purchase on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble's shinythepoet.com conversations with dragons <laughs> yes and that's com. also a youtube channel conversations yes. from dragon with dragons was our our collab on the name yes so um that was when she was practicing and doing and learning and learning how to read the card so if, if you got to understand you got to be scared to suck at first <laughs> you know that's the part you're scared to death because you're like oh my god i'm gonna suck right. then you gotta go uh I just gotta do this. I remember that first reading. I re-recorded that reading ten times, and she goes, "Baby, you know why it does it? You don't think that it? It's because it's for you. It's talking to you. You're talking these cards that are showing for you." And I was like, "Oh, they are." And I mean, I'm bawling. I'm like in full tears. She thinks I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't want to get done to me. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what you got to realize that it's, it's not for somebody else. Yeah. The messages are happening that when you're doing them on a YouTube channel and you're doing them publicly. Yeah. Um, part of that message is talking to you too. Yes. If you're listening and, and I, and I pointed out to her, see what this said, see what that said. That's directly talking to you about this situation. <laughs> yeah. You learn yeah. what, what definitely resonates. Um, that, that's a huge thing. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm looking forward to Key West. I, um, can't wait to see the beautiful people that are able to join us. Cause this is going to be amazing. The intention that we're setting, the releasing and the letting go and, you know, walking into 2024 yes. with here I am and I am shining my light. <laughs> yes. And, and it doesn't, you know, that's the whole thing is, we get into a remote control pattern. We start to go on autopilot. Yeah. And we, what we're going to do is shake that up a little bit. In fact, we're going to break the mold. We're going to break the mold. And we're going to step into our new version mm -hmm. of what we choose. Yes. We're the ones writing the story mm -hmm. of success or failure. And you have to be unafraid to suck it first. <laughs> Right. Because once you get past that, that's only going to last that long. As soon as you step into it, you go, oh, why did I wait so long to do this? <laughs> it's not terrible. I, I actually enjoy it. Right. Whatever it is that you're you're calling. You were born with that assignment. Yes. You chose it. So don't push it away. We got to let go and surrender to our best possible life instead of insisting that we have to live in these confined circumstances that somebody else probably told you was true. It's not your thought. Mm -hmm. You've taken somebody else's definition 
of what you should be doing. Yes. And try to make yourself fit in that mold. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do that. In fact, it's almost impossible because you're going completely counter. Yes. To what you are. Every every nine to five job I've ever had. Um, I got in trouble for talking too much <laughs> all the way back to kindergarten <laughs> for real. I have, I have the report cards telling, telling us she needs to mind her own business and stop trying to worry about what everybody else is doing. Well, that's because I was worried about everybody else. I was, yep. I came into this world wanting to help people. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing you got to realize is just, you've got a natural, even if you don't see it. You don't have to know what it is. That's the other thing. Yeah. We think, oh, well, I don't know what my path is. I've tried everything. <laughs> well, sweetheart, you're already on the path. You're in it. Yep. It's, it's happening right now. You're in the path. So do you want to let it just drop you into a ditch and then bounce you back out into a, into a wall? And then maybe ping pong you a few times, or do you want to actually stop and focus? I'll yeah. always see the infinity symbol when I think about that. I think about the where you get at the crossroads, and I'm always, um, I'm always shown like, okay, this is the rocky, the rocky way going this way, and this part is a little bit more smoother. But you have to trust which way you're supposed to go. Whatever those lessons are that you're um, going to learn there for your highest good so well i think too if the people get at a stopping point because they can't see what the next step is instead of just mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. their self and and letting themselves kind of they can't see what the result will be mm -hmm. something may be asking them to participate in something mm -hmm. and i was just talking to somebody yesterday who said they're back in a loop right they're back into a place they didn't want to be that they thought they got out of and then they ended up going right back to that place like they had moved somewhere and then they ended up having to move back well because they were have moved back now they've got an issue with something they're actually having to deal with <laughs> this time because if they don't deal with it then they're going to loop back again this if yes. they try to leave it's going to bring them back to take care of it mm -hmm. so they actually told me i got my lesson <laughs> i know exactly what i was getting into a pity party about it and i was all upset and now i see I'm supposed to, the only reason I'm back here is because I didn't deal with this the way I should have. Yep. And it keeps bringing me back because I need to resolve it or I can't move forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And yep. even though they don't know what that moving forward looks like right now, they have to deal. So when you're in the tough situation, that tough situation is your way out. Yes. I know it doesn't feel like it. I can tell you from the other side, it's true because I've been through it. The deep, dark night of the soul, been through it. Wanted to give up, wanted to give up. And I realized that the only person that won from me giving up was the part that I didn't want to happen. Yeah. And that I was going to have to go right back to that. And I didn't want to do that. Yeah. And I knew there had to be more to life than being miserable and not being able to move. So choice, my darlings, mm -hmm. it's all about knowing you have a choice and you deserve to be able to be happy. You deserve joy. You deserve happiness. You absolutely deserve love. A lot of times um, we get stuck in a, the pattern of not feeling like we're good enough or that we deserve it. And we absolutely do. You absolutely do. You deserve it. You are worthy of it. Yes. Why? Because you are alive. Yes. You exist. Yes. Existing comes with all the, the whistles and bells of being able to create. Mm -hmm. And the creation of your life is your path. Yes. That's the path. What do you want? Shoot for the moon. Don't aim for something small. That's Don't right. ask for a taco when you could have a whole enchilada. <laughs> a whole enchilada dinner. Enchiladas for a year for free. Right? <laughs> we we want to be in a place where we know that the universe has more than we could ask for. We are not limited only by our, our imagination and our limitations. So allow yourself to move in the energy of I am creating my best possible highest vibration so that I can help myself and others around me raise into our highest frequency and live our best 
possible life. It doesn't come easy. That's right. It's a work. It's a work. Yes. Yeah, it's going to show up in work clothes. It is. And, but blessings do show up through that process, but you got to commit to it. And then you got to surrender to the fact that sometimes it's going to suck. Mm -hmm. And you're going to make mistakes. Y'all yeah. already know I'm a big, I'm, if I screw up on my video, I'm probably just going to laugh about it and keep going. <laughs> I don't like to edit. <laughs> So it's, it's all, it's definitely all a part of the journey. I think that, um, you know, everything from where I, where I started with poetry, um, to the, um, journey and healing, because it was all a part of it. Um, the divine connections, um, you know, the, the books, the artwork, the, all of the different things that I've experienced, I know it's all a part of my divine journey. And, you know, sometimes it, it doesn't come in beautiful colors and, and, and sunlight and, and smiles. Sometimes it comes with, you know, the few things that you gotta, you gotta kick around. Okay. You know what? I'm not, I'm not going to step on that rock. I'm going to go around that rock today. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it comes in, in different images for different people, but the fact that you have to trust that, you know, What's for you is not going to pass you by. <laughs> nope. It keeps coming back until you realize it. Yeah. So there we will draw a close. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> our visit today. I love you guys. Look forward to more of these because we are going to be doing it just like this. And hopefully I'll get better as we go. It's our first one. So uh, y'all deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> we did the best we could. I think it came out pretty good. So we yes. love you. Love light. We wish you love, light, and all the abundance and healing and peace yes. and happiness. And I'll see you soon. Namaste.